Hey, what's up? It's Jake from Nimbus DevOps. And now we're going to go over custom encoding and decoding with JSON. So let's go ahead and create a file to get started. And I'm just going to call this JSON uh, cplx.py. All right. So in the JSON world, you can consider terms like encoding and decoding as synonyms for serializing and deserializing. I basically mean transforming it to and back from JSON. So uh, we'll code an example here and learn how to encode complex numbers which aren't serialized to JSON by default. And we will do that by writing a custom encoder. So first thing we need to do is import JSON and then make a class and we'll call it complex encoder. And it'll take a JSON.json encoder. Just like that. All right, so let's make some functions here. So we're going to define default uh, self and an object. And in there, we will print uh, complex encoder dot default. I'm sorry, default. And we will just pass in object equals and leave that as it is. All right, then we say if is instance object complex then we will return the following uh, underscore meta uh, let's see underscore complex and then uh, num oops let's do num and a sequence of object dot real and object dot image Okay, then we we'll take this guy and we'll go ahead and leave this closed. And then, uh, yeah, right here, we'll do return super brackets, uh, I'm sorry, parentheses, dot default object. Okay, so now we need to make some data. So data equals and we'll do an int that'll be 42 we'll do a float which will be 3.1415 yeah and then finally a complex and we'll do 3 plus 4j okay so now we have data so we're going to do data, uh, JSON underscore data will be JSON.dumps, and then we'll get data, and the class will equal the complex encoder. And then we will just print JSON data. After that, we can define an object hook and pass object, and we will print uh, object hook and object. Yep, that'll do. And then we're going to do a try. So let's try if object, and then in here we'll put underscore meta uh, is equal to underscore complex. Then uh, let's return complex uh, star object and then the index of num and then we'll throw an accept key error and we'll just return that object if there's a key error okay so then the last part of this all we need to do is say data underscore out will be the json dot loads for json data object hook will be equal to um, object hook and then we'll just print our data out yeah data out there we go okay so we start by defining a complex encoder. Uh, this class is a subclass of the JSON encoder class. 
But our class overrides the default method. The method is called whenever the encoder encounters an object that it can't encode and is expected to return an encodable representation of that object. So our default method checks whether the argument is a complex object, in which case it returns a dictionary with some custom meta information and a list that contains both the real and imaginary part of the number. That's all we need to do to avoid losing info for a complex number. If we receive anything other than an instance of a complex, we'll call the default method from the parent class, which just raises a type error. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we then call json.dumps. And but this time we use the class argument to specify our custom encoder. So then the result is printed out. So let's go ahead and try running json complex. Uh oh, I got a num I got an error. Uh, so from the bottom, name image is not re is not defined. Uh Oh, that's because there's a dot. I'm like, I don't need to define it. It's part of it. Okay. There we go. There was a comma instead of a period. All right. And here we go. So um, half of this job is done. For the deserialized part, we could have written another class that would inherit from JSON encoder or decoder. But instead, we chose to use a different technique that's simpler and uses a small function of uh, line 23, the object hook. Um, within the body object hook, we find a try block. And the important part is the two lines within the try block itself. The function receives an object. Um, notice that the function is only called when the object is a dictionary, right? So if it equals a dictionary, um, the function reserves the object. And if the metadata matches our convention for complex numbers, we pass the real and imaginary parts to the complex function. The try except block is there because the function will be called for every dictionary object that's decoded. So we need to handle the case where our meta, the underscore meta key is not present. Um, so the de decoding part of the example output, um, you can see in there as well. Um, you can see that a complex has been correctly deserialized, right? Um, but let's consider a slightly more complex example. Uh, with datetime objects. So let's say we want to split the code into two blocks, first, de uh, first serializing part and then a deserializing part. So what we would do in that case, um, let me just, let's make a new file so it doesn't get cluttered. So we'll just call this uh, JSON datetime.py. So let's import JSON and then we will import uh, datetime. Oh, I'm sorry. We need to do from date time import date time time delta and time zone, and we'll say now is date time dot now and now underscore tz for time zone will be date time dot now, and then we'll say tz equals time zone time delta hours equals one. We'll say there's a one hour difference. OK, so now we need to make a class. And we'll make a date, uh, date time encoder class, encoder class. And this will take a JSON dot JSON encoder, encoder. And we define our default function, so def default uh, self and obj and we'll say if is instance object date time then we want to try off equals object dot utc offset in seconds and then we'll put in the accept part of the block and say accept attribute error um, off equals none, off equals none. Then I can return an object. So let's make an object here. We'll say 
uh, underscore meta will be uh, underscore date time. And then we want two more things. We'll want our data. And we'll say object dot time tuple and take that at position six. Oops, index six uh, plus the object dot microsecond like that. And then the last part would be the UTC offset. So UTC offset would just be off like that. And then from there, I can return super dot default and then that object. Okay, so now let's get some data. So now we have data equals and let's create an object. So an int will be 42 because 42. A float, um, we'll make this pi again. So 3.14159265. Uh, we'll make a underscore date time and set that to now. And then we'll make a date time tz and set that to now tz. Yeah, get my comma in there. Okay. Then all we have to do is uh, call this. So JSON, JSON underscore data will equal JSON dot dumps, dumps, and then data. And then let's set the class to the date time encoder, date time encoder. And then we'll just print it. So print JSON data. Ta da! There we go. Okay, so let's clear the screen and let's run Python JSON date time. Oh dear, date time, date time, attribute error has no attribute, micro send. Micro second. Don't mind me. Clear. There we go. There, so you get to learn how to. Um, uh, or remember to read your trace trace back file uh, output backwards. <laughs> so there's all of our data. So the reason why this is slightly more complex lies in the fact that date time objects in Python can be zone aware or not. So you need to be a little bit more careful. The flow is the same, but you're dealing with a different data type. So when we start to get to the current date and time information, we do it both without now and with now TZ time zone awareness, just to make sure our script works. Uh, we then proceed to define a custom encoder as before, overriding the default method. And the important parts of the method are how we get the time zone offset off information in seconds and how we structure the dictionary that returns the data. So this time the metadata says it's date time information and we save the first six terms in the time tuple. So year, month, day, hour, minute, second. So that's why it was six. Um, plus the microseconds in the data key and the offset after that. So you can tell the value of data is a concatenation of tuples. And if you pick that up, then great. And if not, then well, now you know that's what it is. Um, when we have our custom encoder, we proceed to create some data and then we serialize. And the print statement outputs um, this, which is a little bit harder to read. Um, just because it is, it's long. But we do find out that none is translated to null. So you see on the end, it says null. Um, it's the JavaScript equivalent. So we can see that data seems to have been encoded properly. So we can do, um, look at the second part of this script. So the second part of the script would be to define some sort of object hook. So, um, let's see here. Let's look at, where do I want to put this? I'm going to put it in here. I guess I could put it in here. So if I define an object hook, object hook, and take an object, then I could do a try, try accept block. I'm just doing so much JavaScript lately. I'm sorry. I keep trying to say try catch block. <laughs> uh, if object, and then a sequence meta is equal to uh, our underscore date time, then what do we want to do? We want to say uh, if object uh, UTC 
offset um, is none. Uh, oops, what did I do here? Is uh, is none. Then tz equals none, and then we can say um, uh, else tz equals time zone time delta. Oops, seconds equals object, and then our UTC off set like that. And then return the date time uh, star OBJ of our data, comma TZ info equals uh, TZ. Cool. And then we have our accept, which would just uh, actually let's do accept key error, which would be return object. And then we would just need some data out. So data underscore out would equal JSON dot loads and then JSON underscore data comma object underscore hook equals object hook. And then let me make sure that this is defined beforehand. Yeah, look, JSON data doesn't exist. So we're just going to take this guy and cut it and then come down here after JSON data has been outputted. Let's do it here. And just for fun, um, we could try to print it, but you'll see you'll see this a little bit differently. Yeah, so let's just print uh, JSON out, or data out, sorry. Data out. And let's look at both and see what they both look like. There we go. Let's make this a little taller, clear the screen, and run it. Okay, what do I have? In it, I've got all this, blah, 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 blah. And at the end, I just see class object. So that's all it is. It's just, it's just giving you an object. All right, so we can work with that. So to verify the metadata is still telling us the date time, we then proceed to fetch the time zone information, right? Um, once we have it, we pass the the tuple using star to unpack the values in the call and the time zone information to the date time call, getting back to the original object, which I printed out. So let's verify it um, by printing that data out. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and print this out and you can see it. Um, and you'll get everything back correctly. So as an exercise, if you'd like, you can you can write the same logic for a date object and it should be a lot simpler, um, but you could try it. So uh, before I finish up with this topic, uh, it's worth noting, it might be counterintuitive, but working with date time objects can be a very tricky thing to do. Um, this code is not like, don't just copy and paste this or whatever you're doing and putting it in in production or whatever like you need to use your own brain to figure out what to do but um if you do grab it and use it make sure you test test everything test for different time zones daylight savings time being on and off different dates the epoch etc etc um, the code may require some modification to fit your your use case when i first started learning to code and people were just like look it up on stack overflow i found that i could never ever ever copy and paste anything from stack overflow and just be able to use it which is why i don't use it and you're just inheriting everybody else's mistakes so highly don't recommend doing that so hopefully you learned something a little bit more about using uh, custom encoding and decoding um, yeah, I, I have seen a fair amount of this, honestly. So it's definitely something that you should be familiar with and play with. Uh, there's plenty of like code challenges and stuff like that. And you'll always see weird date time stuff. So worth looking into. If you have any questions, let me know. And if not, we're going to move on.